we had a, an interesting thing happen last night where um, it was the F6 fuse had uh, blown on the team probably three times over the course of the night. They thought they maybe had a problem with the shark solenoid, um, so they swapped the whole shark assembly out. And uh, that didn't seem to solve the problem. But F6 on the CPU board controls the shark solenoid, uh, the Baldor solenoid for this lane down there, and the number 10 pin, pin holder solenoid in the pin holder back there. So we need to go through and test these devices first. It looks like our solenoid has uh, been replaced already. So this may not be the problem, but let's start here. Bring our uh, test cable in. Bring our meter. We're going to set this to continuity. Continuity plus tone. Test the leads. Actually, we're not testing a switch here. We don't need tone. Let's turn the tone off. So let's go ahead, let's probe up. Eleven point seven ohms and book spec is around twelve, so this is good. We don't have an issue with the Baldor solenoid for lane number five. We're gonna repeat this process on the shark solenoid. Probe up also. And we are at 12.1 ohms. So we don't have a direct short in our shark solenoid. We're going to drop our setting table down and go take a close look at the number 10 solenoid. I would just like to point out something that may be um, is stupid obvious that I just realized. Um, we're looking at the number seven pin holder when we need to be looking at the number 10 pin holder. Let's try this again now that we're uh, <laughs> looking at the proper pin holder. Uh, awkward. I don't want to yank on the wires to separate the plug. Um, that is not good practice. So instead, we have to do it a little more delicately. So again, we're going to probe up on our red leads. 26.7 three twenty seven thirty ooh may have an issue here huh let's get that pin out of there <laughs> Yeah, something's a little sketchy here. Not exactly sure what. Um, our meter readings are kind of jumping around a little bit. Weird. Well, this may not be our problem, but uh, something's certainly a little bit weird. So why don't we go ahead and pull this pin holder? We'll take a closer look. I want to pop this solenoid out and take a uh, a closer look at it if we can. Open the uh, the cover up. Please come out. Arrgh, I need two hands. Hold on. Well, let's uh, try to open this thing up. See what wonderful 
treasure we can find inside. If I can split the case, please. I need, I need more fingers. Here, I need a teeny tiny flat blade screwdriver. Let's see. I've got one in my pocket. One of these release tabs is um, being very stubborn. I will. Mm, I'll, I'll find a way. Believe me. There we go. There's always a way. Good. Yeah. Let me get you a better angle. Maybe some more light. Not that much light. Gee, surface of the sun. We have exposed copper on the coil in here. There is no metal here. This is a plastic cover. But there may be some more exposed copper in other points here. So let's continue taking this thing apart. And uh, let's see what else we can see. Yep, there's a little bit back here where it would have uh, contacted this metal plate. So we have some exposed copper here. A little bit right here. And a lot bit right here. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's put a new solenoid in this. So we have a brand new, never been used, shiny solenoid what we need to do oh you guys can't see let me see if i can pitch you up a little bit that might be a little bit better we're going to extract the pins out of the plug okay so old solenoids out New solenoid is coming in. Okay. So let's go ahead and test this one. My meter has turned off. What? Uh oh, lead failure, technical difficulties, please stand by. Let's go ahead and switch meters. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the fluke. It just is beeping incessantly and says lead. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> but now... 25.9 on this one, so I think we're good here. Let's uh, install the solenoid in the housing, and then we'll put it back in the machine. Now for the incredibly fun part of putting this back together. Like I said, I am not a tiny person. And this is a very tight area to work in. So we're going to struggle through this the best that we can. We'll get there. Uh, it may take some other people yeah, a much shorter amount of time to do this. But uh, it's okay. We're not under the gun here. We're not in a major time crunch, unfortunately. 
I cannot see what I'm doing. I can't see the holes for where our uh, screws are supposed to pass through. I'm kind of almost doing this by feel. Uh, and we are failing miserably. Let's see if I can crane in here a little bit more. Yeah, we're close, huh? But we're still struggling. There we go. Why? Why? don't understand why this has to be so difficult, um, but it is. Let's just go ahead and yeah, remove the two bottom screws. Um, let's start with the two tops. We'll get those in. Just get the screws in and start the nuts in on the front side. Then we'll bring in our little piece of uh, mesh, our steel mesh that is uh, supposed to help prevent the pin holders from walking side to side over time. And then we'll bring in our two bottom bolts. Boop, boop. Retrieve our mesh here. Fairly important. Uh, will the machine run without it? Yes. But will it run much better with it installed? Absolutely. Let's see if I can finagle it back in. All the way, not just halfway. I think we have a, yeah, we have a little strand here that's started to come out. Try again. I wish that there was a more easier way to do this. Um, and maybe there is, and I just don't know about it. Um, but either way, we are making progress. I don't know what we're hanging up on. And that's okay. What we'll do, we'll just leave that there for now. We'll come in with the, uh, the nuts for the bottom two screws, just so we have all of our hardware in place. And what I'm going to do, so we don't make this an ultra long, awkward video, I'm gonna pause it here, and then I'm gonna work on getting that mesh uh, seated back in there. Then we'll pick it back up again. I ended up getting that mesh in, but I, um, uh, hold on, I went from the bottom side up, and that seemed to work much, much better, but let's get our pin holder set, we're checking left to right, I think I have made the, uh, the nuts too tight. I can't slide left to right at all. A little bit looser. Here we go. I am kneeling on the setting table, so I have to uh, remove myself from the setting table. So that we're not adding any extra weird front to back or side to side weird load on the table. It needs to go. It needs to go that way. Just a little bit. Smack it into compliance. There we go. We are good there. So now let's lock it down. We'll put our pin detecting plate back on, and then 
loud, loud noise warning. Then, uh, oh yeah, we gotta plug it back in too. It's okay. One step at a time. Mm -hmm. Can't see what I'm doing. There we go. That one. That one. <laughs> Wish the handle on this uh, socket wrench was just a little bit shorter. We're uh, smacking into all sorts of things. I can't see what I'm doing. I'm literally doing this by feel. Well, oh, it's tight. Yeah, that's tight too. Good. All right, let's plug it in. Plug it in. All right, we're plugged in. Pin detecting plate coming up next. We need our pivot pins. One here. And one here. Now, let's get everybody out of the way here and we'll run the machine. The last thing that we need to do, this is uh, F6 right here. This fuse was bad. After the third time it, it went out last night, they didn't replace it anymore. And that's okay, but we need to grab another fuse. And in case anybody was wondering, um, it has been removed from incoming voltage. Please remember to work safe. All right, we have a new 3.15 amp fuse coming in. Fuse holders look good. It's hold nice and tight in there. Did we find the smoking gun? Um, not yet. Um, could something on the CPU board be going bad and causing this fuse to blow? It's possible, right? But what we need to do is our due diligence in eliminating everything else before we just condemn the CPU board. So what happens if it's not, you swap this out and it's not the CPU board, you know, where do you go from there? I started at the other end. I started looking at components and making my way back to the board. I don't typically just assume the board is bad and swap it out. I want to check the entire uh, circuit before that So our final step is going to be running in diagnostics for a while um, To see if we have any other further issues So we're just gonna let it go Been running in diag for uh, Half an hour with no problem. We'll let it go a little more Just to make sure but I think that we are golden here Let's watch it set another rack of pins. Almost there. Have to double check pin count too. We might be a little bit a pin shy. Come on. There we go. I want to check this setting table. I noticed um, some pin holders were a little wobbly when uh, the table came down to detect. 